San Jose International is located in the heart of Silicon Valley, one of the largest tech hubs in the world. San Jose Airport is one of the three major airports in the San Francisco Bay Area and is the second largest in terms of its passenger volume. For many years, I personally felt that SJC was very underappreciated by the community, but now that Orbix has stepped up and delivered their rendition of the airport, it looks like things are finally turning around for one of the fastest growing airports in the country. As this is my hometown airport, I just had to take a look at this scenery. But is this scenery up to the Orbix standard we all know and love? Let's find out. Buying and installing this scenery is made easy with Orbix. A while ago, they introduced Orbix Central, which allows users to buy, install, and manage their products with ease. SJC is no exception to this, and their installation went by without any problem. After the scenery has been installed, there are a few options that can be toggled on and off, such as static aircraft, choosing which set of dynamic lights is turned on, normal or high detailed textures, enabling or disabling PBR models, and some more. The documentation can also be found in Orbix Central. This offers some information about the scenery features, some recommended settings, a coverage map, and more. A pretty basic document, but still contains some good information for the user. Overall, modeling at the airport is quite good. The details on the terminal is great with lots of smaller details like air conditioners, satellite dishes, vehicle bollards next to the doors, and more. The jetways also look great and are positioned in the way where there is no problem connecting to the aircraft. However, there are issues with the stairs that lead up to the jetways on Terminal B. They are misaligned by quite a bit and are consistent the same way on each gate on the terminal. Orbix has included a few static aircraft at the terminal. They are all Boeing 737-800 models with three in Southwest livery and one in the Delta livery. The modeling is substantial enough for static aircraft. You are able to identify which aircraft they are and they help the airport look busier if you are flying offline or without traffic. I do wish there could be some more variation type in the aircraft or some aircraft placed over at the fixed based operators. The terminals have received some attention landside too. Both parking garages have been modeled with a good amount of detail to them. Items such as light poles, fences, and other signs with real banners that were advertising a real new flight at the airport have been added. The parking lot just outside of Terminal B, however, looks very unfinished. The parking lot is empty with no markings to suggest that there is even a parking lot located there. Moving around the airport, both the cargo areas and fixed based operators have a decent amount of detail to them. The modeling is very clean with details added in places that make the airport feel like the real world counterpart. Around the airport there are clear markings or objects seen in the ground textures that would indicate either a building or a tree that could have been modeled there. Confirming on Google Maps shows that these items have been in place for a good amount of time. Items like a gazebo near the general aviation parking, a missing gas station just off the north end of Terminal A, and a large open part of what looks like gravel with shapes on top of it has not received any custom modeling of any sort, making these areas feel quite incomplete. The taxiway signs are placed all around the airport. The modeling is adequate, but the placement of many of these signs is misaligned with the ground textures or in the completely wrong place. The airport has 3D grass that is scattered around the edges of the taxiways and runways, but leaves empty spots without 3D grass in bigger open areas. This can be fairly noticeable if you are in a taller aircraft like a 747. Most of the grass blends nicely with the ground textures, but some of the grass is colored as if it were in the summer months. These stand out quite a bit and don't fit in with the airport as the way it's textured. The surrounding area also receives some attention with the scenery, custom models for places like Avea Stadium, SAP Center, and the shopping center to the south of the airport have been included. The modeling is enough to help with VFR traffic and bring the surrounding area to life. However, some larger landmarks haven't been included, like the Caltrain maintenance facility. 
On the buildings included for the main part of the airport, the texturing is good. The detail is true to what the b real airport buildings look like for the most part. Comparing the roof of Terminal B with Google Maps, the color is completely wrong and is missing some larger areas of green that are easily found on Google Maps. The ground texturing is fairly average, depicting a winter or springtime of the year with nice green grass. This does not, however, match the surrounding areas as True Earth Northern California has summer textures, which has a very dry yellow grass surrounding the airport. Orbix also decided not to map each island of concrete for taxiway signs and other airport equipment. Each island is from the photo textures, which makes the edges very jagged and makes the ground texturing look lower quality than it actually is. The taxiway and runway textures also feel a bit average. The textures look like they were taken out of a library of pre-made textures and don't convey how SJC really looks. The taxiways appear too clean or new. Some places on Google Maps show a ramp that is filled with cracks, but in the scenery it's a brand new paved area. A lot of the color changes between different pavement types feel exaggerated in areas as well. The taxiway markings are unfortunately very sloppy. All over the airport there are taxiway border markings that line up with the change in surface material in most places. The markings in the scenery are all over the place and making the markings feel rushed. There is taxiway with the center line that is far off center and missing markings at various points around the airport. The parking spots also feel overly clean with no oil marks on the ground compared to what is seen on Google Maps. There is also missing marks for vehicles such as the fuel farm parking at Atlantic Aviation. Nightlife at the airport is great in some places while disappointing in others. Airside, terminal lighting does a nice job of lighting up the ramp. Landside, however, feels a bit underwhelming and unfortunately looks quite dark in areas, especially where the freeway is and city is close and all lit up. The north cargo area has lighting, but the main parking area for the aircraft feels dark considering this is where all the planes will park and a majority of the work gets done. South cargo area has issues where the lights appear to be illuminating in the wrong direction towards the street and not onto the ramp. Moving over to the general aviation side of the field, there is little to no lighting in areas. Some of the buildings have night textures for windows with varying brightness while others don't have any at all. No dynamic lighting is found on the side of the airport, making night operations almost impossible. I have been told this is for performance reasons, but I have seen many other airports with better dynamic lighting than this airport, with greater performance. The taxiway and runway lighting looks great, with my only complaint being the centerline taxiway lights being fairly dim. Parking is set up in four different groups. Terminal A and B, North Parking, and General Parking. Terminal A and B and North Parking are set up correctly. General Parking is a bit of a mess, however. Opening the airport in Airport Design Editor gives a good picture of what this section really looks like. The parking numbering system is all over the place with no sense of order, making it very hard to figure out what spot to select when using GSX or to spawn in. Parking at Atlantic Aviation has also been flipped around in the wrong direction, which is disappointing considering a quick look at Google Maps would show the correct direction. The signature FBO has also been completely left out, so there is no options to spawn on that ramp. Some parking spots are placed where they shouldn't be as well, such as at South Cargo. Overall, I wish the numbering was better organized and different ramps on the airport had different names associated with them. It is also worth pointing out that not all of the taxiways are included in the AFCAD. On a general aviation side, there are plenty of missing taxiways and the ones that are included are mostly mislabeled. This means that not only will default ATC not give the best route, but it will also give incorrect taxiway identifiers, making it basically impossible to taxi with the taxiway signs that are in the airport. The commercial side of the airport is mostly correct, with a few errors here and there with labeling. San Jose is quite heavy when it comes to performance. 
Loading into the sim with a default aircraft, the FPS hovers around 25. Since I am running True Earth along with this scenery, I tested if True Earth is having any sort of ill effects on the performance. Disabling True Earth improved performance by maybe 2 FPS. When disabling San Jose and leaving True Earth running, the FPS increased by over 100%, reaching 55 FPS easily and at some point reaching over 60 FPS. Having both disabled did not increase the FPS by much more, so it is safe to say True Earth has little to no effect on FPS at SJC. At night, the performance story doesn't get any better. Dynamic lighting has always been a known performance killers, but most sceneries have done a good job with balancing, keeping good performance with the visuals. This balance is not present with this scenery. Setting at the terminals in the day gets around 25 FPS, when night comes around and the dynamic lighting comes on, the FPS drops to 6, and that's with a default prepared aircraft. The first patch turns the extra dynamic lighting off by default, but this did not make any sort of difference from my experience. Loading times at this scenery are also much longer than compared to other sceneries, sometimes over 3 times as long. VRAM was also an issue. Running a GTX 1080 with 8GB of VRAM, I have had multiple graphics card errors while flying in or out of Air SJC with aircraft like PMDG. Along with these errors, the VRAM often gets high enough for prepared to automatically turn off the enhanced atmospherics, something that I think is unacceptable to have with a higher end card like a 1080. Orbix under delivered with this airport in my opinion. Keeping in mind that not everyone will notice everything I do as this is my hometown airport, I believe everything I have mentioned is something people could pick up easily on their own or by looking at Google Maps. The scenery feels like it was rushed to get out the door. There are lots of details that feel sloppy and errors that should have been picked up from a beta testing cycle. Being sold for $39.95 Australian dollars or $29.07 US dollars at the time of writing, I think SJC is priced a bit high for the quality of this airport. I wouldn't expect this many errors from a scenery that cost so much. If Orbix updates this airport and fixes a lot of its issues, this airport could go from being average to very good. That'll do it for this review. If you enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe, hit the bell for future videos, and we'll see everyone in the next video.